Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be learning about Telmo delay model, another mo modeling approach used for modeling the delay of a SEMA circuit. Now in order to estimate the delay better, we have another model called Elmo delay model, which also follows the RC, uh, which also considers the transistors as uh, resistors and capacitors, combination of resistors and capacitors. The model follows an RC ladder. Here if we have the input and we have R1 resistance, C1 capacitance, we have resistances and capacitance. That is we have one MOSFET here, another here involving R2C2, another here involving R3CT, dot 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 here involving R and C N. So we have n number of MOSFETs. So total delay would be R1 C1 plus R1 plus R2 sum of the resistances before C2 into C2 plus R1 plus R2 plus R3 sum of the resistances before C3 into C3 plus R1 plus R2 plus R3 dot 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 Rn sum of the resistances before Cn into Cn. This is the equation that will be followed in case of measuring the delay using Elmo delay model. It gives a better approximation. Now we will be estimating the delay of 3 input NAND gate using our Elmo delay model. So we have to estimate the worst case rising and falling delay separately for a 3 input NAND gate driving H identical gates. That is each NAND gate drives H NAND gates, H identical NAND gates. This parameter, uh, the number of NAND gates, the uh, number of identical gates that each gate drive is called uh, fan out. So here we have a fan out of H. Now one thing is to be noted that each NAND gate has one output. That one output can be mapped to only one input of NAND gate. So each, each NAND gate output will drive one input of one NAND gate. So for H inputs, it will drive H, uh, for H NAND gates, it will drive H input. Now input capacitance of each each NAND gate from this circuit, this is the circuit of 3 input NAND gate, we get the input capacitance of each NAND gate would be 3 plus 2, that is 5. We can take uh, 5C, we can take any input, we can take this input here also 3 plus 2, here also 3 plus 2. For any input, the capacitance would be 5C. So for for one NAND gate, the capacitance is 5C. For each NAND gate, the capacitance total will be 5HC. This capacitance is added to the final output of it. Now, if we are to measure the rising delay, what would happen? For the worst case scenario, we have to consider only one of the MOSFET is switched on. The resistance of that, that MOSFET is R and the capacitance of it is 9C plus 5HC. There is also resistances involved in the pull down side which will not be required. Why won't they be required? Because this will be the direction of current flow. So total PDR rising delay would be R into 9 uh, plus 5H whole into C. Now if we are to measure the falling delay, what we would consider we have the we have the 9 plus 5H whole into C output. Then we have a resistance R by 3. From it, we have a capacitance. Again, we have a resistance R by 3. From it, we have a capacitance. So this, capacit this capacitance is 3C. This capacitance is 3C. We have another resistance. Each of the resistance would be R by 3, R by 3, R by 3. The capacitance of this resistance is directly connected to the ground and that's why we, we will not be considering it because uh, that will be considered as a short circuit. Now from Elmo delay model TPDF that is the falling delay would be R by 3 this capacitance into this uh, this resistance into this capacitance R by 3 into 3C plus R by 3 plus R by 3 2 R by 3 into 3C into 3C plus R by 3 plus R by 3 plus R by 3 that is 3 R by 3 that is only R into this 9 plus 5H whole C. So we get from here we get RC from here we get 2 RC so we get 3 RC here and here we get 9 RC so total 12 RC plus 5 RC H. This is the total falling delay for the worst case scenario and this is the rising delay for the 
worst case scenario using the Elmo delay model. Now there are two parts of the delay. Firstly, parasitic delay 9 or 12 RC, which is independent of the load. That is, the, if load is connected or not, this parasitic delay would be there. And the effort delay 5 HRC, this part of the delay or the effort delay will only be available if the load is connected. If no load is connected, we will not have this component of delay. Now, what is the worst case delay? Uh, we have considered the worst case delay. Now, what is the best case scenario? Best, best case, uh, the delay can vary significantly in case of worst and best case scenario. In case of best case scenario, we have all the three MOSFETs switched on. As a result, three resistance in parallel give the result of R by 3. So, total delay would be 9 plus 5 HC, capacitance remains the same, into R by 3. And this becomes 3 plus 5 by 3 HC. This is much lesser as compared to 9 plus 5 H RC. This is much lesser than this is much lesser than that. As a result, in case of best case scenario or the contamination uh, scenario, uh, we'll get a lot lower delay than in case of worst case scenarios as expected. Now we have mentioned the we have already repeatedly mentioned the capacitance as parasitic capacitance. Uh, since we have parasite, we have mentioned the term parasitic capacitance. It is intuitive that the capacitance are actually diffusion capacitance. That is, they are related to every source and drain of it. Uh, and the good layout will minimize the diffusion area. How it can do that? Let us look at this layout. Here, this node and this node are connected to VCC. As a result, since they are connected to VCC, there is no capacitance between this diffusion region and VCC, VDD. And there is also not no capacitance between this diffusion region and VDD. As a result, in case of the PMOS, we get this 2C capacitance from this diffusion node to VDD and this 2C capacitance from this node to VDD. Again, in case of NMOS, uh, this is connected to ground, but these three nodes are not connected to ground and we have this 3C capacitance connected to uh, capacitance to the ground for these three, uh, three diffusion nodes. And this gives this as it is, uh, since these two are connected to VC, VC, C, VDC, VDD, this gives an optimum output because it reduces the capacitance at the output, which is not the case, uh, uh, which might not be the case if we hadn't connected these two directly to VDD, if we had connected them by any other means. That is, our, our design will indicate how, design will indicate how our delay can be increased or decreased. Now let us compare two designs and see how a design can decrease the delay or increase the delay. And we will be comparing the two layouts. These two layouts, if we draw the diagram of it, there are two, two PMOS, with PMOS in parallel. There are two PMOS in parallel and there are two NMOS in series. So this is two input NAND gate. This is very obviously a two input NAND gate. As it is, in this case, this diffusion node is directly connected to VDD. As a result, there is no current. This diffusion, uh, there is no capacitance. This diffusion node is also connected to VDD. There is no current, a uh, capacitance. So we have only a single capacitance here. Again, the, we have a capacitance here. We have a capacitance here, but there is no capacitance here because this is connected kind of ground. So we have capacitance in these three places and the size of all the NMOS will be equal. So the capacitance here would be 2 into NMOS width. The capacitance here would be 1 into PMOS width. But in this case, see this node is connected to VDC. So there is no capacitance, but there is capacitance over here and there is capacitance over here. So in the PMOS side, we'll have capacitance of 2 into PMOS width. Again, in the NMOS side, this is connected to ground, but this is not. So, here we have a capacitance, here too we have a capacitance. So, we have 2 into NMOS width. If this is how the system is designed, uh, we see here, here the delay would be 4 and here the delay component would be 3. Not exactly 3, it will depend on the actual width of the PMOS and NMOS, but roughly we can estimate the delay in this circuit will be lower than the delay in this circuit. So this is obviously a better design than this one. 
This is how we can modify our layout to work in such a way that they decrease the overall delay of the system. This, this is all what I need to say about the transient response. If you have any queries, please let me know through comments uh, and discussions in box. Thank you so much.